today, Friday, January 21, 2022. 20 handguns and 40 magazines seized at Sangster International Airport. Police link this morning's shooting of six people in Bounty Hall, Trelawney, to a gang feud. Investigators encountering major challenges in the probe into the killing of nine-year-old Gabriel King. Chief Medical Officer says the COVID-19 surge in Jamaica could be protected if infections could be protracted rather if infections plateau. We begin with a major developing story. 20 handguns and 40 magazines were seized this afternoon at the cargo section of the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. Head of the Ports Division, Senior Superintendent Wayne Cameron, told Radio Jamaica News that the weapons were seized about 3.30. Radio Jamaica News has been informed that a customs broker is being questioned in connection with the shipment. SSP Cameron said the police are still searching the cargo area at Sangster International and will have details as they become available. The police have linked this morning's shooting of six people in Bounty Hall, Trelawney, to a gang feud in the area and are reportedly following strong leads in the investigation. Three of the persons were injured. Three are in serious condition. Three of the injured persons died. Three women remain in serious condition. The deceased have been identified as 24-year-old Daniel Williams, 26-year-old Tashe Black, and 25-year-old Shanelia Clark, all of Trelawney addresses. Investigators reported that sometime before 2 o'clock, Mr. Williams and the five women were returning from a party in Wakefield when they stopped at a yard in Bounty Hall to pick up a friend. They were attacked by four men carrying rifles and handguns. The gunmen opened fire on the vehicle, hitting the six individuals. Commanding officer for the Trelawney Police Division, Superintendent Carlos Russell, says the shooting appears to have been a case of mistaken identity. Based on what we have garnered so far, um, the persons who have been killed are not a part of the, the conflict and would have been innocent um, persons. But based on what we have received so far, the perpetrators would have mistaken the vehicle for another vehicle and um, shot the, 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 the wrong person. Commanding Officer for the Trelawney Police Division, Superintendent Carlos Russell. And Superintendent Russell says the police have been monitoring criminals who have been relocating to Trelawney. Some of the individuals are said to be involved in the gang feud in Bounty Hall. These persons that are involved in these conflicts are not native of the parish of Trelawney, but they have been displaced here and have been here for some time. Um, these are persons that we have been monitoring over the, over the period. And um, we are aware of the situation and um, we believe that we can bring a closure to it very soon. Commanding Officer for the Trelawney Police Division, Superintendent Carlos Russell. And a resident of Bounty Hall says the three persons killed were law-abiding citizens. She says the incident has left the community in shock. And this morning time, me get up and me go go vivi. Vivi up, me see, come here, go down from my belly. It can hear it. I'm making some clappers, but I'm not clappers. And that, this morning, that one lady came and said, I don't hear what happened. I'm telling him, say, no. I'm just get up and put on the and come down here. So I'm ready to this me come see you. So I feel it for the youth, them. A young youth, and they don't stand make life yet, you know. And they don't make life yet, and the girls, they don't make life. And at this, I'm going to get in the community. And yes, so we don't hear nobody. I'm a young boy, them here. So they love you, know. A resident of Bounty Hall in Trelawney. The St. Catherine North Police are trying to determine a motive for the fatal shooting of a 24-year-old woman in Spanish Town this morning, about 11 o'clock. Shireen Stevenson, the bartender of Fraser's Content, was at a shop at Royal Plaza on St. John's Road when a man walked in and shot her. She died on the spot. Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of crime, Fitzbailey, says investigators are encountering major challenges in the probe into the murder of nine-year-old Gabriel King in St. James. Gabriel, who was autistic, was killed during a reported carjacking in Montego Bay last Thursday. It's reported that hoodlums dragged Gabriel's mother from the vehicle, hit her in the face and drove off with the child. DCP Bailey told Radio Jamaica News today that investigators are not getting cooperation in the probe.
I know that the officers are coming up against certain resistance. Uh, the, the, it's not one of those. Um, it's a, it, it, it is proven to be very difficult in terms of some of the things that you expect would have been just, you know, normal. The police have to be doing some extraordinary situation to get the support that they need. But the investigation is ongoing and we are going to ensure that we get to the bottom of it. Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime, Fitz Bailey. A team of investigators from Kingston was sent to St. James to assist with the probe into Gabriel's death. And the bloodletting in St. James continued yesterday. About 12.40 a.m., 34-year-old Camry White was at a fishing beach in Lilliput when he was shot by a gunman. Gunman then struck in Copperwood, Cambridge, St. James, leaving a man dead and another individual injured. About 4.20 p.m., 29-year-old Javan Willie and a man were at a shop when they were attacked by hoodlums. Mr. Willie died after being shot in the head. The other man has been hospitalized in serious condition. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa McKenzie says the current COVID-19 surge in Jamaica could be protracted if infections plateau. Speaking during a media conference yesterday, Dr. Bisesa McKenzie noted that Jamaica is not yet at the peak of the fourth wave. She noted that many are mistakenly expecting new cases to begin decreasing after the country gets to the peak. When we peak, it does not necessarily mean we're going to take a short time to drop. A lot of people seem to think that we can plateau for a while, especially because of the things that you say in terms of the number of unvaccinated persons. When we see that we have the densely populated areas like St. Catherine and Kingston and St. Andrew having large numbers, we know that the potential for exposure is great. And so those parishes tend to take a longer time to settle down and kind of stretch out the surge because it just takes longer to get those numbers down. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bessesa McKenzie, 76% of communities island-wide now have COVID-19 infections. Jamaica has exceeded its COVID-19 bed capacity with the peak of the current wave of infections yet to be seen. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has said the current situation is very concerning. And Jamaica's COVID-19 death toll increased to 2,568 after the virus claimed seven more lives. Five of the latest deaths occurred in Kingston, while St. Catherine and St. Anne each had one. Five other deaths are being investigated. Meanwhile, Jamaica's COVID-19 positivity rate is now 48.2%. 773 new cases were confirmed yesterday from 1,834 samples. Leader of the Scots Hall Maroons, Colonel Lloyd Latibadir, says efforts were made to include a Kampung Maroon chief, Richard Curry, in today's meeting with the government. The meeting with Prime Minister Andrew Holness involved Colonel Latibadir, Colonel Wallace Sterling, who heads the Moortown Maroons, and Colonel Marcia Douglas, who is the leader of the Charlestown Maroons. During an Instagram live session this morning, Chief Curry suggested the meeting was held on the condition that he was excluded. Colonel Latibadir told Radio Jamaica News he understands the Prime Minister's decision to leave out Chief Curry. The Prime Minister has said that he did not want to meet with Mr. Curry right now because of the tension in the air and the disrespect. And I think he has a right to defend that. So in, in our stand now, we had another meeting, which was last night, an emergency meeting, to also let him know that we may still have to go because somehow we have to start dialogue. He said today's meeting set the pace for further dialogue. The, the thing is that we need dialogue. We must have dialogue. And uh, with the, with the, uh, the Prime Minister called this meeting, as a matter of fact, and set his protocol of how he wants to meet. I think we were obligated to do our, our, our go along with that in some way until we can set our meeting, which I think will be the next meeting of how we would like to see. Because Corey has to speak about a compound term, you know, and his own. We cannot decide what goes on there or what is his issue. We, but we know what, what the issues face all of us, not just Maroon Town, but Jamaica. But for sure, we want to make sure that we are about not just the Maroon Town, but we're talking about Jamaica. Leader of the Scots Hall Maroons, Colonel Lloyd Latibadir. 
There are four Maroon groups in Jamaica, each headed by an elected chief. In Barbados, less than 48 hours after she led the main opposition Democratic Labour Party DLP to the second worst defeat in its history, Verna de Peza resigned today. The DLP lost by a 30 nil margin in Wednesday's general election. Media reports said party officials were meeting to discuss the resignation. Ms. de Peza, who is 50, was elected a DLP president in August 2018 after the party was defeated by the Barbados Labour Party. Mia Motley was sworn in yesterday for a second time as Prime Minister of Barbados. A U.S. man has been found dead at his home surrounded by dozens of snakes, many of them venomous. Neighbors alerted police after going to the house in the U.S. state of Maryland and discovering him lying on the floor apparently unconscious. When officers arrived, they found 124 venomous and non-venomous snakes, including pythons, cobras, and rattlesnakes. The largest was said to be a 14-foot Burmese python. Although they were in tanks, animal control experts were called in. The nearby Charles County Animal Control Center is coordinating rescue efforts to move the reptiles with help from experts from North Carolina and Virginia.